Welcome to Superhero Rundown. I'm Crimson, and today it's your dad, Superman. That's right, we're talking about Superman and why the American way no longer exists. Now let me say first, I enjoy both Superman and Superman 2 with Christopher Reeve. It's made with the best of intentions, and obviously the filmmakers had no idea that Superman as a concept would no longer apply in 2021. Oh, and in the spirit of your dad, Superman, let's not forget what DC did to Siegel and Schuster, taking Superman for only $130 in 1938 because they didn't get the money they deserved. And that's not okay. So where do we start? Well, let's start with the American way. And let's be clear, the American way doesn't exist anymore. You know, a house, a white picket fence, a dog, a cat, kids, money to live comfortably everyone having an equal opportunity to succeed, when one income could provide for a family. You know, when the worst thing that could happen to a white person was that your neighbor could be a communist. <gasps> Anything but that! Heroes are consequently the catalysts of change and transformation. They represent the utopian impulse of a society in that they are the individuals that unlock a potential, which is hidden within us all and which allows for human progress. Furthermore, hero myths are not only universal, but also highly adaptive and protean, whereas the structure remains, its representation adheres to social and historical changes. In contemporary culture, one such representation is the figure of the superhero, and scholars have pointed out its strong connection with classic mythological heroes, while arguing that a hero always embodies what we believe is best in ourselves, representing the values and morals of a society by becoming the idealized vision we have of ourselves and our society. So where does Superman fit into this? He doesn't take on mega corporations. He takes on petty criminals and thieves, rescues a cat from a tree, and saves hapless people who fall out of helicopters. He's the reason your parents can rest easy. He can afford an apartment with just a journalist's salary, and he's a pretty bad journalist to boot. He takes on things that Americans are scared of, missiles being stolen and hitting major metropolises, illegal invasions represented by Zod and natural disasters, all things that your parents thought about. For example, those Soviets were just waiting for the opportunity to strike the United States. Or how about all those invasions that happened in the 1980s and 1990s? Oh wait, that was the United States doing it to other countries. Then there's the terraforming plan in Superman Returns, which lends credence to the natural disasters that people were afraid of. Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, the Challenger Explosion, things that seemed natural but because of technology were man-made. So what obstacles does Superman have? With Lex and Superman, he goes after the Hackensack missile and then reverses time to save Lois. That's right, Lois dies, so Superman does the one thing he's not supposed to do, interfere with the course of human history. He flies around the planet and fucking reverses time, which in the grand scheme of things is not the worst thing I've seen Superman do. Also, all those fucking ecosystems he disturbed, like fuck dude, he ends up saving Lois and puts Lex and Otis in jail. You know, save the world, get the girl... In Superman 2, the Hackensack missile that Superman threw into space frees Zod and his minions. Because missiles equal freedom, especially when those freedom missiles hit people who are foreign and not white. I guess America wasn't ready for those foreigners. Oops. Okay, Zod with a gun is definitely a stand-in for the U.S. giving freedom fighters guns, right? To install new governments? Still Dad's world, unfortunately. There's a subplot where Clark becomes human because he loves Lois or whatever, but after hearing about Zod taking over and getting his ass handed to him, Clark goes back to his dad, apologizing that he should have listened or something. Look, admitting failure is very human. But this Superman is your dad's Superman, which means he's going to be on the side of your dad's America. And just like in the tradition of the American military, collateral damage! Lex Luthor, 
an asshole and a capitalist, sides with Zod and his ilk. But he flips sides a lot. Because fuck those foreigners like a good American, am I right? Anyway, Zod and the others are defeated by good old American ingenuity because the foreigners can't be smarter than Americans. Not in your dad's world. Then Superman reverses time. Again. Because, you know, why pretend there are issues in your dad's world? Zod and company are imprisoned in the Phantom Zone. I feel like that's why people my dad's age feel that millennials are lazy. Because we work a bunch and get nowhere. I hear a lot of people say, when I was your age, yeah, well, times are different, my dude. And finally, we get to Superman Returns, starring Brandon Ruth and Darkwing Duck. Look, I'm not getting into it. He's an asshole and Darkwing Duck is better, so Lex is played by Darkwing Duck. End of discussion. Anyway, Superman has been off-world for about five years. Lois is mad at Clark and now has a son who obviously is Superman's. The whole world sees that he's back after he saves a plane from crashing into a stadium, and Clark gets his old job back at the Daily Planet. I'm sure that's a commentary on the divorce rate of your parents, but whatever. Gods are selfish beings who fly around in little red capes and don't share their power with mankind. Wow! Rude! Lex decides to terraform the United States with Kryptonian crystals laced with green kryptonite because what's more American than selling land to people and then charging them a fuck ton of interest so the housing market explodes? Anyway, Superman is now dead because Lex killed him by stabbing him with a kryptonite knife. I guess we could say that it's a capitalism killed your dad allegory? Sure, Jan. So Superman gets better because Lois pulls out the knife and he saves the world by lifting the terraformed land into space. And Superman does have a definition of the American way. In DC Addresses the Dark Side of Superman's American Way, Jules Chin Green explains, Superman's version of the American way is more a reflection of his experiences as a Kryptonian refugee on Earth than a reflection of the values he internalized while passing for human. Because while Superman was accepted by mainstream society at the same time that heroes of color were looked at with distrust, Kal-El demonstrated a commitment to creating a less prejudicial world. Even as a prejudiced society accepted him, he himself did not take on their prejudiced ideals and actively worked to make the world more egalitarian in its heroes. This is an important distinction and ultimately is Superman's greatest legacy. He's a foreigner, but because he knows what it's like to be here being raised by the Kents, he's not a foreigner like that. But the American way doesn't exist anymore. Not for my generation. Sure, there are people I know who have a house, kids, and a good job. However, most of the people I know, they still live paycheck to paycheck, have student loan debt, have poor credit, and of course are living in apartments but not able to pay all their bills. This is not to complain on behalf of millennials. This is to point out that your dad Superman can't solve our problems. Your dad Superman can't fight capitalism as it rips through America. Your dad Superman can't fight the lack of health care, the lack of maternity leave, the lack of vacation, the lack of equality, the lack of equity. Your dad Superman can't fight the systemic racism. Your dad Superman is dead and we don't need him. We have a lot of issues here in the United States. We fight wars we don't belong in, we can't take care of our own citizens, and I, for one, am tired. For what is the American way? At the time the line originated, it seems to have been inserted by 1943, it was perhaps simpler to answer this question. America was then nearing the end of the Second World War, where it was being lauded as a savior in Superman fashion of the Western world. This golden age of Superman's adventures, and much of the subsequent Silver Age, coincided with an America at the height of its power, and of its more ineffable powers and abilities. Since that time, the notion of what exactly the American way is, is less clear. The unchanging image of Superman as defender of truth, justice, and the American way created a unique ideal for many the wishful thinking that a fictional character might alleviate real-world dilemmas. In the 1986 song Land of Confusion, the rock group Genesis laments the declining Soviet-American relations 
foreshadowing World War III with the verses, Superman, where are you now? Everything's gone wrong somehow. The men of steel, men of power, are losing control by the hour. All things we don't need anymore, because he's your dad's Superman. He's not our Superman, and he can't save us. Not anymore. Your dad's American way doesn't exist anymore, and we didn't sign up for this. We didn't sign up for being company property where we work 40 to 50 hours a week for minimum wage and maybe a little overtime just in time for a bill to come through for sickness or a ticket. Capitalism has us under lock and key. No escape. And it's worse than you could possibly imagine. We got 1400 total during the pandemic. Other countries? They paid their citizens to stay home. And yeah, things aren't as good as they were before the pandemic, but that only applies to those at the very top. That's the con in economy. We work the economy, but people have been brainwashed that if they work their ass off, they can have everything their parents did. It's a lie. Our worth is determined by our sacrifices, not what we provide for our family, but how much of our life with them that we're willing to give up to make those provisions. But I'm pretty sure the Founding Fathers said life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, not capitalism, money, and a police state. Superman was your dad's hero. We need a new hero because he's not saving us. In Capitalism Doesn't Have to Be This Way by Zachary Carabell, he explains, For many of its critics, capitalism, in all its versions, is a maximizer of more. The relentless pursuit of profit, the drive to multiply shareholder value that undergirds most large public companies, and the demand that revenue grow faster than the overall economy or the population. All of these impulses prevail on Main Street, on Wall Street, and in Silicon Valley. This is one reason why such an enormous gulf has opened up between the richest Americans and the rest, and why large banks, behemoth energy companies, multinational industrials, huge private equity firms, and large tech companies have flourished. So you can be nostalgic for your dad's Superman, but he ain't gonna cut it anymore. It's time to get up and fix the system because Superman isn't here now. We're losing control by the hour and we need to live for the future. No flag, no country. You can't have one. Those are the rules that I just made up, and I'm backing it up with this gun from the Nafidal Right Nafidal Nafidal Right Nafidal Right. God, now I can't say it. Now every time I say national, it's gonna be Nafidal Nafidal Rifle Association.